Amen. And we appreciate him today. Now, somebody here this morning, you needed that song. And you need to take that to heart. Every morning when I woke up this week, that song has been on my mind. Every single morning. Seven days. Every morning and every night before I go to sleep. Sometimes in the middle of the day, I listen to this song. God has got something here this morning. And I know it's Mother's Day, and I'm going to preach a Mother's Day sermon here directly. But we are a Pentecostal church. Spirit-filled, and we don't follow programs all the time real close. At least we ought not. We need to follow what God is doing. And God this morning is touching hearts today and changing lives. You may feel like, hey, I have nothing to offer God. I want to remind you of who you are. You are created in His image. And He's not done with you yet. He's not finished with what He's got for your life. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and lift them up, you everlasting doors. Then the King of glory comes in, not when your head is, when your chin is being kicked by your toes. It's when your head is lifted high. And God begins to do something in your life. Look, if a door closes and nothing's going to open because you're His kid. If there's some reverses, there's going to be some forwards. If there's some sitting still, there's going to be some running. If there's some backing up, there's going to be some running forward. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I know what my God says in His Word. I'm not getting a revelation here. I'm just telling you what He said. That's not revelation. That's just what the Bible teaches. Amen? We ought to let Him be the director of our lives. Thing, crazy things happen when you're living life on planet Earth. I've discovered things that I'm not excited about sometimes. Things that I don't really understand. And I tell God, hey, I'm one of your kids. What's going on? He said, just getting your attention. Because obviously you ain't been paying attention. Sometimes God's just getting our attention. Lord, it's going to be hard for me to preach this Mother's Day. Mother's Day. I want to preach today in two sections. Point one is I want to talk to us kids about how to honor our mothers. Did you know the Bible has a prescription for honoring your mother? We want to look at that today and see what that 
has to say. And the second thing I want to talk to is I want to encourage mothers to make a difference. Hello, Mom. You can make a difference. But before too far, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Thank you for doing your best with what you got to work with. <laughs> and my mama, had, my mama said, Good, Dear God, where did you come from? Can I send you back? Is there a return policy on this one? And God said, No, you got to keep him. So she did. I'm thankful. Mother's Day originated with a lady by the name, well, the one we have, by the name of Anna Jarvis who thought we should honor mothers at a certain time of the year. So on May 9th, 1914, President Woodrow Wilson set aside the second Sunday of May as Mother's Day, and we as a nation should take time to honor our moms for the contribution they're making. Now, in 1914, things were much different than they are in 2019. Amen? Moms ain't the same way they used to be. <coughs> Honoring our mothers, oh, did not begin on May 9th, 1914. Honoring our mothers has been around a long time. In fact, it was on God's mind when he wrote the Ten Commandments. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, comma. Important that you get that comma. Because he's telling us what I just got done saying. If you do, this is what is going to happen to you. That your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. They were getting ready to go to a promised land and they needed long life. And, and God stops in the middle of all of this and takes time to type out. I mean, write with his finger. Wouldn't you like to see God write with his finger? On rock? I mean, he wrote it on rock and then carved it out and gave it to this guy. I'm wondering in my mind, how did Moses carry those Ten Commandments? There were pillars. I mean, they were made out of rock. How big must he have? No, no. I, I, let me get back to my sermon. Things that make me go, hmm. But he gave them Ten Commandments. And in the middle of the Ten Commandments, he puts number five. Honor your father and your mother. It's been on God's mind for a very long time. Listen, uh, honoring our parents was such a great concept that he repeated it in Deuteronomy 5.16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Remember, we just read the Ten Commandments. That your days may be long and that it may be well with you. How many of you want things to go well in your life? That it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Let me tell you what I know about God. God knew when they got to this new promised land, there was going to be some challenges in that land. And he said, here's the prerequisite. Honor your mother and your father and the land that you're going to get into. Things will be all right. Now, I know you say, wow, you mean... That much stuff weighs on us honoring our parents, obviously. I mean, he said it, I didn't. Jesus picks it up in the New Testament in Matthew 15, 4 through 9. For God commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. There's that word again, command. You know what a command is? It is something that you must, absolutely must do. Now, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. Now, that's in the New Testament. We live in the New Testament. Anybody want to bring that practice? No, I'm just kidding. We can't bring that practice back. But you say, now this is the reason Jesus said that. Whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Now the the priests of that day said, now if a guy's got a lot of money and he says, I'm giving it as a gift to God, whether he gave it to him or not, he was excluded from providing for his aged parents. 
And Jesus is coming along saying, if you do not take care of your aged parents, you should be put to death. I didn't write this, I'm reading it. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandments of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you. These people draw to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain... You need to get this last little part. And in vain they worship me. In other words, all your hand raising, talking in tongues and dancing is of no value if you do not take care of your mama and your daddy in their old age. Amen? I didn't write this stuff. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. The tradition of the elder said if a grown child merely declared some property as a gift, the child did not have to take care of his parents. Jesus quotes Exodus 20 and, and 12 and 21 and 17 to say that children should help their parents when they get older. And you can't say, Mama, love you. Love you, Mom. You're supposed to write a check when they need some help. Supposed to go to their house and help them. Don't let them take advantage of you, but help them. Today, the role is reversed. Many grown children still have to live with their parents and have their parents take care of them. We cannot reverse the roles laid out in Scripture and expect things to go well in our society. We must show practical ways to honor our parents, not just with an attitude. Love you, Mom. Listen to what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. My God, he's in the house today. Wow. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Hmm. Wow. Honor your mother, your father and your mother, which is the first commandment. With a promise. It's the only commandment with a promise. That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Wow. That's pretty good. Children, obey your parents. This is right. The Greek word for right is the, the chaos. And it means righteous. It is used 163 times in the New Testament. Reminding us that there's a lot of good things in the Bible that are right. And it places a stamp of approval on those who honor their parents. Every culture is built on the premise that children are to obey their parents. When this concept is absent, it is a sign that that society is starting to die. Think about that for a moment. When you look around in our society and you see the decay of all the things that are going on, one of the things that's listed is disobedience to parents. You don't know that's in Scripture. Let me tell you something, young people. Some of the hell that you're living in and some of the chaos that you're living in on planet Earth is one of the reasons is simply because children don't obey their parents. You say, I don't believe that, Pastor. Well, I'm glad you brought that subject up because I want to prove that to you. I just want to prove that to you. Let's look at Romans chapter 1, verse 30 and 32. When Paul wanted to look at a society that was crumbling, he looked at Rome. He said, in those times, in that city was backbiters, haters of God. Uh, hello? Do we have any haters of God in, in, our, in our Congress and in our government today? I mean, if, you, if you've been following it, they just removed God from the proceedings uh, uh, when they swear people in in the court, in the federal courthouse. They just removed God. This week. I watched it on TV, and I thought, these people are crazy. Violent. I have never seen such violence in my life. Proud boasters, inventors of evil things. What does that next verse say? Disobedient to parents. That almost seems like it's not supposed to be in there, doesn't it? I mean, because look at this, look at this list of stupid. 
backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil. And then there, then there comes along one of the things is disobedient to parents. Undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving to, of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. That is crazy that in the list of all of this carnage, in all of this stuff, it doesn't even seem like it ought to be in that verse of Scripture. But it says disobedient to parents. How do we get across or how do we find out or how do we become disobedient to our parents and not expect that to be displeasing to God? When a society starts to crumble, one of the things that it talks about is that in the last days that we would be disobedient to our parents. Now, I know when you're about 15, you think you know everything. I was 15 once, and I thought I knew everything. And when I got 25, I realized I didn't. And I realized that my parents were geniuses. In this verse, Paul talks about shameful human behavior that causes to give people over to sinfulness. And one of those things is simply being disobedient to our parents. Food for thought. You are creating the society you will live in by how you honor or dishonor your parents. You're creating that. Now, when you look at the Ten Commandments found in Exodus, the first four deal with how we're to respect God. Then you got your mama and your daddy. Then the last four deal with how you're supposed to work with one another. How you're supposed to deal with each other. You're not supposed to commit adultery. You're not supposed to lie. You're not supposed to steal. You're not supposed to murder. You're not supposed to covet your, wife, your uh, neighbor's stuff. Your, way, your neighbor's wife or his possessions. You're not supposed to do that. So the first four deal with how to relate to God. Second four deal with how to relate to people. And in the middle of that called the bridge is how you treat your mom and daddy. It's interesting, isn't it? Hmm, any it is to me anyway. The promise is if you honor your parents, God will honor you. The first promise is the promise of a good life. Proverbs 4.10. How many of you want a good life? Hear my son and receive my sayings and the years of your life will be many. Proverbs 10.27. The fear, of the, the fear of the Lord prolongs the days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. Now, that pro, that's a Ten Commandment is not a guarantee that you're going to live a long life. If you read Job, and I don't have time to read this to you today, but read Job chapter 22. And if you'll read all the way down to about verse 28, you'll, you'll catch in there. If you do bad things, you can shorten your life. You don't want to do that. Part two, mothers who make a difference. How many of you know, Mom, that you need to make a difference in your kid's life? It's not about just getting them to 18. I've heard parents say, if I can just get them raised. Listen, they're going to be your kid when they're 50. They're going to be your kid when they're 60 if you're still around. They're going to be your kid. So it's not about just getting them there. It's about putting something into them. I would hate to have raised my kids and they're almost in their 40s now and them to be total turkeys. I would not like that. That would not be nice. But I raised them in a fashion. Their mother and I raised them in a fashion so that when they got to the age they are now, and we got to the age we are now, we could have dinner together. And it'd be happy and fun. Moms who make a difference. I want to challenge every mom in here to make a difference in your kid's life. You can make a difference. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't that a beautiful salutation way to start a letter? I start all of my letters to the pastors like that. I use something like that. that verse, I just like that. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. And, look at there, forefathers. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandma, I mean grandmother. 
Lois, and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded also in you. Make a difference, Mom. Three generations of serving God. Three generations. Grandma, Mama, and me. You have a tremendous ability. We need to be instructive mothers. We don't know much about Eunice. She's not mentioned a whole lot except right there. Paul obviously seen the value of this woman in Timothy's life. Paul recognized the influence and he wrote about it in Scripture so that I could read it. He realized that because of who Timothy was, it was because of who Grandma was and it was because of who his mother was, they had poured all of this influence into this child. And because they had done that when he grew up, he was a man of faith and integrity. Because his mother and his grandmother took the time to pour into him. The faith that was in Timothy was first in his grandmother and then in his mother. They taught him the scripture. How how much time do you think they spent with him? I have no idea how much time they spent with him. But I do know one thing. They spent some time with him. Your kids should hear about God from you. They should sing songs about Jesus from you. And they should be singing songs about Jesus before they're singing songs about a square pants guy Spongebob I mean I hear kids singing that they ought to be singing the joy of the Lord is my strength they ought to be singing the B-I-B-L-E that's the book for me they ought to be singing all of those gospel songs that we've known for a long time they need to be pouring that into our kids so that they get a frame mind that I am, am loved by an almighty God and it is our responsibility moms to pour that into them You cannot put them in front of a television and turn on some of these cartoon things that they have and let that be the babysitter. There's nothing wrong with that occasionally, but it can't be all the time. They need some instructions from you, mom and grandma. When they're at your house, you know, um, the saying is, and it's a bad saying, and it should not be said, and we ought not repeat it. Anything goes at grandma's house? This is grandma's house. Kids are spoiled here. I mean, those are cute things to hang on your refrigerator, but oh my, what repercussion they have in society. They ain't spoiled at our house. Grandma there, every opportunity to pour God into them, she's doing that. We ought to be doing that with our children. I'm not saying that if you're not doing that, you're a bad mother. I'm just simply saying we ought to think about what we're doing. We need to take them to church. We need to hold their hands. They need to see me, and they need to see their mama, and they need to see their grandma singing, praying, and working in the house of God for God. They need to see you teaching Sunday school. They need to see you cooking dinners and and doing all the things that you get involved in. They need to see that so they will know how I'm supposed to act in the house of God when I become an adult or when I become a teenager. This is what it looks like. This is what a servant of God does. We've created a culture that that a servant of God today enters the door at exactly five minutes before church begins and exits the door exactly five minutes after it's over. With no involvement in between. You can say, oh, me, or ouch, or whatever you need to say. Number two, be a protective mom. Exodus, and and, and I'm not going to have time to read all of the scripture. It's Exodus 2, 1 through 10, but I'm going to read 1 through 4. And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife and daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she... She hid him three months. Now, population control was the word of the day when that was written. Pharaoh, in order to control the population of the Israelites, decided that he would kill all the males. We have population control today. We don't quite do it the same way that they did. They killed the baby after he was born. We kill the baby before they're born. God wasn't happy with that, and God ain't happy with this. Egypt paid for that, and we're gonna the world's gonna pay for this. 
Hello? God is not happy when those types of things happen. Be a protective mother. So she hid him in the bulrush. She took an ark, a bulrush for him, and dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and, and laid it in the, in the river so that he would be found. Now, do you know what the penalty would have been if they'd have caught her? The penalty would have been death. Just so happened God decided that he was going to help uh, protect this child, and he did protect this child because of the act of the mother. But I wonder about all the mothers that lost their sons. But this one was spared. And because he was spared, she got, to be, she got to be his nurse. She got to be the one who raised him. And when it came time for a deliverer to rise up, there he was. I wonder what kind of teaching went on from mom. Hmm. Number three, be a supportive mother. Support your children in what they do for the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 24 through 28. Now when she had weaned him... She took him with her with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood in by you here praying to the Lord for this child. I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition which I ask of him. Therefore, I also have let, lent him to the Lord. As long as he live, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. Hannah wanted a son. Could not have one, and then God gave her to her, and she gave him back to God. Let me challenge you to give your children to God at a young age. We have plans for our kids as they grow up. We want them to be doctors and lawyers, and we want them to get six-figure jobs and do all of those things. The only thing I really wanted for my children was for them to serve the Lord God with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength. I figured if, they, if I can establish that in them, God will establish all the other stuff in them. Amen? God will get all of that stuff figured out in them. There are three things that we can learn from what Hannah did. Number one, God answers prayer concerning your children. Pray for your kids. We should give our children to the Lord to use them as He sees fit. Amen? And number three, we should support our children as they work for the Lord God Almighty. In conclusion today, to the moms who protect, support, and instruct, and were loyal to us, we want to say some things to you today. Thank you for all you've done for us. To the young mothers and that are here today, I want to challenge you to protect your kids, support your kids, teach them about the Lord, and remain loyal to them. Lead them to Christ. Your influence will last a lifetime in their life. And I'm going to tell you, because of the influence that my mother had on me, my mother got saved when she was 34 years old. She was saved two years before I got saved at 19. But she had a tremendous influence on me, even though it wasn't wasn't going to church all of my life my mother had an influence in my life and when she accepted Christ I followed my mother I followed her and it's been a long time my mom's been dead almost 30 years now been dead a long time but I can still hear her in my mind I can hear her voice every morning before I went to school my mom had me come and stand in front of her and she checked my neck and my ears and made sure I was clean that's that's what's what moms did back then because when you got to school your teachers did the same thing to you and you got a star or whatever they would give you you know cleanliness was next to godliness they believed and they did all of that stuff for you I can still hear her telling me that breakfast was ready I can hear her calling my name and telling me it's time to get up but the thing I remember the most is when I was not saved, her calling my name to God. We lived in a three-room shack. Not three bedrooms, three rooms. You couldn't help but hear Mama pray. There was nowhere else in the house to go. And when I would slip in after midnight and try to get to where I was going to lay down and sleep so she didn't hear me, I would hear her calling my name. I would hear her saying, God, save Franklin. 
And don't let this boy perish lost and undone without you. That became very haunting to me to hear her voice inside my head all the time. When I was awake, when I was asleep, Mama's voice was right there. And now all these years later, I still hear my mom praying for me. What an amazing, what an amazing influence you can have on your kids, Mom. You can touch them in ways that you just can't imagine. And I know today we live in societies that are blended. I know that. But I want to challenge you regardless if you're in a blended family or not. If you have children in that home, pour everything into them you possibly can. You will make a difference. Sacrifice for those kids because what you're doing for their life will ultimately make a difference. It will make a difference. It will make a difference. Can I get some music this morning? I know you guys have got dinner plans. Or Y'all are going to be going out here in just a little while to eat with you folks. But I want us to take it just a moment to pray. And I haven't forgot how we started service today. He is a way maker, church. And he is a miracle worker. He is an everlasting God. Never, ever, ever will he not be there. So this morning, I'm just simply going to ask you, if you are in a position or in a place and don't make me beg today because we don't have time. You know where you're at with God. You know if your back is against the wall. Just play Waymaker. You know where you're at with God. And you know where you're not with God. You know what you're facing this morning. You know the conversation you had with Him last week. You know all of those things. And so does he. Even if you didn't verbalize it, but just in your mind you thought, when, why, where, are you even there? He is. He is there. So if you're here this morning, you're in a place that you need to hear a voice of God whisper to you that you need to hear him sweep over your soul and help you with something that you're dealing with that sounds like you today this altar's open you want to come and pray come and pray We'll wait for you for just a minute. Father, you're so good, so merciful and so kind, so gracious, so full of compassion. You honor us, God, today with your presence. And I thank you, Almighty King. And I bless your name this morning. Father, thank you for these that are responding to your call today. Church, could we pray for them? Father, in the name that is above every name, we call on your name today. We ask you, Lord God, this morning that you would hear us from heaven. That you would answer our prayers, that you would touch our lives, that you would transform them today. Lord, that you would speak peace in the middle of the storm. That you would bring hope and help to us, God, when there seems to be none. Lord, you are almighty and you are a way maker. You're a miracle worker. You're a promise keeper. 
Lord, you have promised to never leave us nor forsake us, but to go with us always to the end of the world. God, that is who you are. Those attributes about you will never change. You are sovereign in all of your ways. You direct our paths and you lead us into righteousness, God. I pray for these this morning that you would touch their hearts, that you would touch their lives, that you would speak peace and hope into them today, Father. And God, I'll be careful to praise you today and to give honor to you. Lord, I love you today, and I thank you, and I pray, God, that you would minister grace, that you would touch and transform today as only you can. God, I love you today. God, I praise you today. God, I give glory to your blessed and wonderful name. You are sovereign, Lord, in all of your ways. You are sovereign, God, in all of your ways today. And I thank you. And I praise you. And I give glory to you today. Thank you, Jesus. challenges us as his kids. Trust me. Trust me. That is a challenge for us humans is to let go with abandonment and trust him. But he is able. Our ushers are going to receive the offering today. This is for the expense of our church. If you're paying a tithe, please mark it on the envelope. If you need to give electronically, we have the card here you can give with your debit card or credit card or you can just go online 
give his giving to the Lord this morning. just say go home I'm going to eat but I know I can't do that and please my dad you know what you you know why you're here and you know what you need is What you're asking God to help you with, and what you're struggling with. That was what this whole service was about. It wasn't necessarily about Mother's Day. It's just Mother's Day, and that's the sermon I, I needed to preach today. Not the one I wanted to preach. I'm going to ask one more time. Don't come if God is not dealing with you. Don't come just to say, I'm going to go satisfy the preacher. I'm going to go over so we can go home. Don't do that. I'm smart enough to know if the real deal don't come, we'll just go on the house. I believe I have enough discernment to know that. He is here moving in this place and if you need to come and let God help you today then you need to come let God help you because thank you some of you ladies come pray with there's others here today you need to come come on God is good he wants to do this all the time he wants to meet every need we have Don't make the preacher beg. Just obey the Lord and come and let him help you. Let him fix what's broke and let him change the things that's there. He is an amazing God and he knows everything. You can't do this. You cannot carry this on your own. It will break you. I don't care how strong you think you are. It will break you. Some of you preacher sitting out here. Come on up here and help me. Now we're getting to where God wants to deal. He wants to help. Don't you, you feel the atmosphere in here change? You feel the atmosphere in this building change now? We obey in him now. Hallelujah. Go ahead on worship team. Oh, my God, today, Lord, I worship you, God, I praise you this morning. Oh, 
Shorabaki.